Hello my loves and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I thought I would run through my absolute favorite things for 2023. Fashion items, beauty items, and my favorite books and TV shows. Basically like my favorite content that I consumed over the year, which might help you guys if you're looking for something new to read or to watch in 2024. I just want to recap, like a bit of a Spotify recap, which is for everything, if that makes sense. So of course, this is my channel. So everything's going to be pink, girly, glamorous items. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I have so many gorgeous, girly, glamorous videos coming in 2024. You may have noticed this isn't my usual posting day. One of my goals for 2024 is to post more frequently on YouTube. So I am going to do like a couple of these bonus videos every now and then. Let's get into my favorite things. I'm going to start with fashion and then beauty and then content. So let's go. Okay, let's start out with fashion things. I just grabbed a big bag of all of my examples and my favorite things. I will try to include reference photos of me wearing the things that I'm talking about. If there's not a photo included, it's because I couldn't find one. Starting off with like winter, I was obsessed with the faux fur trend this year, particularly faux fur hats and faux fur coats. I remember I wore a faux fur coat to fashion week. I did like a long weekend out to the countryside and I was wearing these faux fur bucket hats the whole time. I feel like particularly for like a vacation, winter vacation core, the faux fur bucket hats slay and faux fur coats just look good over the top of every outfit in the winter time. Pointed toe kitten heels. These ones are from Tony Bianco. This trend was like a resurgence of 90s Carrie Bradshaw core. And I was so here for it. I got this color because I bought them during the winter time. But now I absolutely regret not buying the pink ones because they would be perfect for spring summer. The lace trend. Oh my gosh. I've been so here for this, particularly in the Australian spring summer. This is just a little white lace mini skirt that I picked up from my wardrobe from Addicted. I don't think that I've actually worn this yet, but it's so cute lace dresses tops with lace detailing in it i just think it's such a pretty soft feminine trend and yeah i'm really here for it i feel like it's gonna stay for 2024 definitely this year i got a round yellow and i picked up so many yellow pieces like this yellow frilly top from pretty little thing it's kind of hard to see how this top works so i'll insert a photo of me wearing it yeah i was just like buying a lot of yellow i feel like it's such a fun color and it's also really girly without being pink like sometimes you want to wear a color that's not pink or purple and I feel like yellow is the way to go. So yeah, I'm going to keep introducing a lot more yellow into my wardrobe in 2024. This is going to be my second year now that I've been obsessed with these pants. I've had this one pair of pants for two years. They're literally just like trousers in this thick cotton material from Tiger Mist. I've worn them to death that I'm actually missing one of the buttons on the inside now because I literally wear these with almost every top that I have. I'm obsessed with them. They look good with everything. They have absolutely never failed me. They fit me like a glove. My butt looks cute. They're super flattering, low-waisted. Actually, every it girl needs this in their wardrobe and they're not going out of fashion anytime soon. This is another like 90s, early 2000s trend that's just gonna be here to stay. I just picked up these boots because they kind of resemble what I'm talking about. Barbie core. When the Barbie movie was released and everyone started dressing in Barbie core, all the celebrities at like Hollywood red carpets and stuff like that wearing pink Barbie inspired outfits. Oh my God, I was like, this is my time to shine. I've been dressing like that since I was a child. So it was really nothing new for me, but I just kind of like Barbieified myself even more because it was like acceptable. I wore these boots and a pink mini dress to go and see the movie in the cinema. <laughs> And like, it's so funny because everyone wears like sweatpants and stuff to the cinema. Not me. I was dressed up to the nines in my full Barbie core outfit. If you watched my birthday vlog, you will know. Actually, if you've watched a lot of my YouTube videos, I think I've featured this so many times. This gold dress was probably my favorite purchase of 2023. It's so iconic. It's so Serena Vanderwoodson. Let's be real. Like, this isn't a trend piece. Gold sequin dresses like this have been around since the 50s, you know, so I don't think it's going anywhere. It's expensive, but she's something that I'm going to hold on to for my entire life probably. And I just feel like Serena Vanderwoodson when I wear this, it's so special to me. 
And lastly, chunky bangles. This was a trend that I saw a lot of kind of pop off in the middle of 2023. It just elevates an outfit so much, having a chunky bangle. I wanna actually invest in a lot more of these this year because this is the only one that I own currently. That wraps up my fashion favorites. Let's get into my beauty favorites now. For beauty, let's start with makeup and then I'll get into skincare and hair care. Firstly, I have to say it, Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. I could not live without this. It makes my makeup look so glowy. If you're going to invest in a makeup product, invest in this and invest in Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. Literally, you do not have a single pore or flaw. Your makeup will look incredible with these two products. Another discovery of 2023 was... Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. This foundation is really, really good. It's medium coverage, looks so glowy and radiant and clean. Charlotte Tilbury is one of those brands that I truly think is worth the hype, worth the money. A discovery for me this year was the site, Glam Radar. Australian girls, New Zealand girls, um, I think they ship to the US and the UK as well. They have the widest range of really unique makeup products that you can't really find on Sephora and Mecca and stuff like that. It was there that I discovered this Made by Mitchell Curve Case. This case changed my life. And if I can stress upon you, one makeup product that you absolutely need in your kit, it's this. Because it just like gives you everything that you need. I have used this to death. So you have beautiful contour shades, bronzer shades, and then look at these blush colors. Orangey blush. You can blend pink and orange together for the perfect peachy color if you're going for like Victoria's Secret Glam, baby pinks. This would be my number one new favorite discovery because I already knew about this. I've been using this for like two or three years. Also from Glam Raider, e.l.f. Brow Lift. I also do sometimes use Pink Honey Bubblegum Brow Glue, which is really good too, also from Glam Raider. I started do brushing up my brows to make them look like they're like laminated. I only just learned how to do this properly this year because before I thought you needed to put it on after you do your foundation and then I learned to do it as the very first step in your beauty routine. And I feel like my face looks so snatched now that my brows are brushed up. So I recommend this product. It holds all day and it's really, really good. This Anastasia Beverly Hills Cream Bronzer in Caramel. I'm wearing this right now. It literally makes you look so sun-kissed. It's such a pretty color. A little goes a very long way. So one pot of this will last you a very, very long time. But if you're wanting that like Victoria's Secret bronze, you need this product. Second year in a row that this has been my favorite. I have an unwavering love for this and I tried many, many mascaras this year. Nothing compares to Benefit Bad Girl Bang. I think that this is the best mascara ever created. It gives you length, it gives you volume, it's easy to apply, it doesn't smudge, it lasts all day. And every time I use this in a TikTok, someone comments, what mascara was that? And last but not least on cosmetic favorites, this I literally discovered the last, within the last two months or so. It's these lip glosses from Emco Beauty. They're called Lip Lights Shine Gloss and it has a mirror and it has a light. These are so convenient for when you're on the go. And the formula is really, really good as well. It has like a very light shimmer. I had always been a believer that you don't need super expensive shampoo and conditioner. I was like, nah, it's all just a marketing myth. Until I actually properly tried using the Olaplex range in its entirety and my hair has never looked better. It's so shiny. It's so healthy. It looks incredible. It pains me to say it, but you need to invest in your hair. So I started using Olaplex shampoo and Olaplex conditioner as well as Olaplex number no. three hair perfecter. It's like a treatment and Olaplex number no. six bond smoother that you put on your hair when it's wet and it like makes it look so smooth when you blow dry. It makes it blow dry quicker. And then Olaplex dry shampoo. The whole range is so good and you will see a drastic change in your hair if you use good quality stuff and don't use stuff from the drugstore or the supermarket. For skincare, this year I started using the Fresh Rose range. For one, the packaging is just gorgeous. This pink color. I also have a big toner and it literally has rose petals in it. I have the full range. I love it. It smells absolutely divine and I feel like a princess every single night when I do my skincare routine. My two favorite fragrances that I discovered this year are Who is Elijah Nomad, which is very similar to Baccarat Rouge 540. It smells so girly, slightly floral and fruity and vanillary. And then Daisy Love by Marc Jacobs. This smells so fresh and clean, but also really 
really feminine at the same time. My last beauty favorite for 2023, Press On Nails. They changed my life. I cannot believe that I used to spend hours sitting at the nail salon waiting for them to do my nails and then pay $90 for a set of acrylics every time. What was I doing? Now I just do them myself and they look so good. I always get compliments on my nails. It takes like five seconds to do it. This is my favorite brand of the year. It's called Nail Me. They have some really, really cute girly designs. They have like Hailey Bieber nails. If you use a good glue, they can last for two to three weeks. I use this one, it's called Nail Bond and you can just get it from Amazon. It's a super strong glue that if you file them beforehand, like buff them, they'll last. And I don't think I will ever go back to doing acrylic nails ever again. That's all my beauty favorites. Let me show you my book favorites. For books, I did not do as much reading as I would have liked to in 2023. But of the books that I did read, I have a few favorites that I will actually strongly recommend. This book I stumbled upon while searching for something to read that was going to fill the void of The Summer I Turned Pretty when I finished season two of that. And it definitely has The Summer I Turned Pretty vibes. This ended up being like one of my favorite books that I've ever read. It's so cute. It gives you butterflies, has all those like young love, first love feelings in it. And this is just such a beautiful summer read. I am not a Colleen Hoover fan, but this book I did commit to reading and it is the only one of hers that I've actually thoroughly enjoyed. I think that this is her best book and I've read three or four of her novels now and I wouldn't recommend any of them strongly except for this one. I was hooked. I think I read this in like two days. It's really, really good and a really sweet romance. This series ended up being one of my favorites. The It Happened One Summer series by Tessa Bailey and this is the sequel. It's kind of like, it's not, I wouldn't say it's really a sequel, you could read them both separately, but it's like the two main characters are like sisters and best friends and there's kind of like crossovers. My books that I read, I kind of read like summary novels, I think because it's just like what I enjoy. Really, really cute. It's about like a California socialite who goes to this small fishing town and falls in love with a fisherman. It was an interesting concept. Super cute, steamy. This was my introduction to Tessa Bailey. After reading these two, I went and bought a whole bunch of Tessa Bailey novels. So I have a big stack to get through. She knows how to write romance. These are really good. I was craving a bit of like Gossip Girl vibes. So I reread the It Girl series. I've been reading these since I was like 13 years old. They're definitely like a bit younger to read. Like obviously the other novels are written for adults. These are written for, I would say teenagers, tweens. Basically it follows Jenny Humphrey going to boarding school and there's like a whole bunch of other characters. So glamorous, fabulous, rich kids, boarding school, very, very much Gossip Girl. But Jenny in these books is so different than what she is in the TV series. She is the it girl. Everyone wants to be like her. I mean, she is like a little bit like that in the show, but she's just different. I just pictured her a lot different in these books than what she was in the show. Now, moving on to TV shows that I watched in 2023. I watched Desperate Housewives. I think I actually stopped. I got to like season four four stops but i'll probably pick it back up again i just like sometimes need a break from shows and i'll get like quite far in and then i just get sick of it and then i pick it back up like a few months later i do that all the time um sex in the city i re-watched that this year i've watched it all the way through before but pretty little liars pretty little liars is one of those series like desperate housewives that i've like stop started stop started so I think I've stopped, started my way now to season four. I haven't watched it in a couple of months now. I'll probably pick that back up again soon too, but love it. The Summer I Turned Pretty season two. I loved season two. It was so good. I binged it so quickly. It's just like my favorite show at the moment. Following on from this, My Life with the Walter Boys. I know a lot of people didn't like this and thought it was cringy. I loved it. I couldn't stop watching it. I was so hooked. I would be like looking forward to nighttime all day so I could watch the show. The Way Home, this is like a Hallmark original. It was really good. It's like a time travel show, but like small town family vibes. It follows like the mom and the teenage daughter. So you get like the best of both storylines. I would recommend that one if you're looking for like a small town cutesy show. It's definitely very different than other Hallmark series. Like it's not as cringy and like poorly acted. Like it's got some good actresses in it and they do it really, really well. Like you wouldn't really know that it's Hallmark. It's more like 
on the level of my life as the Walter Boys, I think. The OC, I finished that in 2023 and it broke me and it left it the biggest hole in my heart. But as probably know, I'm obsessed with the OC. I love that show and I will be re-watching it in the next couple of years. One Tree Hill, my boyfriend and I watched this together and we got up to about season four, I think, and then he got sick of it. I still really want to get back into watching this. Yeah, it's a really, really good teen drama and I think that it's one that you could definitely watch with your boyfriend, husband, because... It's got like a lot about basketball in it too. So that wraps up all of my favorites for 2023. And yeah, let me know what your favorites were for 2023 because I'm interested. I want your recommendation. Thank you so much for watching that video. I hope that you found a few new items to add to your wish list or maybe inspired you to read a few different things, watch a few different TV shows in 2024. If you liked this, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to grow my channel this year. It's like my main focus above everything else. So every subscribe counts and it would just mean the absolute world to me. Give this video a like and leave me a comment and I will see you at my usual posting day on Monday. Love you guys.